And listen to how this is worded. Verse 5. This then is the message which we have heard of him. Who is him? Jesus. Jesus Christ. Okay. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you. I'm of the opinion that verse 5 is the key verse for the entire book. It's almost worded that way. Listen to it. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you. It's almost as if he's saying, look, when we saw him and we heard him and we touched him, this was the message he gave us and it's our responsibility to give it to you. Here it is. This is the reason for this epistle. This is the reason that we write this letter. Okay, well, then let's listen. What's the message? God is light. And in him is no darkness at all. Isn't that a great message? You sure? Okay. Um, you're listening well. I appreciate that. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light. I believe verse 5 is the foundation to build on if we're going to rightly divide this letter of 1 John. So we've got to understand verse 5. You don't understand verse 5, you're going to get backwards as you make your way through this book. All right? So what's verse 5 teaching? Well, it's teaching us two simple truths. Truth number one is this, God is light. You ever tried to describe God? I've been reading Isaiah. <laughs> Whom will ye liken me unto, he says. <laughs> You know, I can't say God is just like. It's difficult, right? So what we have here is a metaphor. God is light. Well, I, I understand light. Okay. Um, have you ever looked into a light that's bright, just a, a, a bright light? It's difficult to, to look at it very long. And then when you turn away from it, you're not looking at it, but you still see bright, okay? It, it just... It radiated, it just had an, an influence on you. So, I think with light being a metaphor, it would do us well to, re, to, to try to put into words what's being suggested here. Isaiah 60, verse 20, The Lord shall be unto thee an everlasting light. Now, that doesn't mean a light bulb. Okay, it doesn't mean these new energy efficient, hurt your feelings to buy one. Light bulb, okay? It's a metaphor. It's, it's a picture so that our brain can wrap around this idea of God. So God is light. Let me um, give you a couple of suggestions. Light would suggest brightness. Just think through this, okay? We're going somewhere. Light would suggest brightness. Light would suggest truth. W would that... Parallel what you think of God, truth, okay? Light would suggest purity. So far, just trying to get the brain going. Should see smoke coming out of your ears, okay? Light would suggest holiness. Light would suggest excellence. Light would suggest good. Just a basic statement. Not going to overload your wagon. Just simple. God is light. Think through that, okay? Here's the second thing I think the verse is trying to teach us. That there's no darkness in God. So, the opposite of light would be darkness. All right? And this is what God is. God is light. God is not darkness. Okay, fair enough. There's another metaphor. What does that suggest? I'm glad you asked. Let me give you some suggestions, okay? Darkness would suggest evil. Darkness would suggest bad. Darkness would suggest unholy. You getting the picture here? Darkness would suggest impure. Darkness would suggest an untruth or a lie. So just a very basic, simple 
foundational elementary truth, but you've got to get it, otherwise you won't understand the rest. And that is this, God is light, God is not darkness. Now the end of the verse fascinates me. And in him there is no darkness, what are the last two words? At all. Well, can you believe that? So God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. And it appears that this is a point that John is going to emphasize. Now, you would think that that would be obvious, wouldn't you? The book of 1 John is written to believers. You would think that that was obvious to them. This simple statement, God is light, and in him there's no darkness at all. Perhaps he's taken a shot at the false teaching of Gnosticism. I think he probably is to a certain extent. When a Gnostic says, no, it can be dark as long as you learn something. No, 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 no. If you're a believer, remember God is light and in him there's no darkness and there's no darkness at all. Um, well, even today, there's no doubt that this is being undermined, isn't it? The standard of who God is. And what John is trying to get us to remember I don't know that he's necessarily teaching this. It's a reminder is this. There is no evil in God. None. Not a little. Not a lot. Not an inch. Not an ounce. Nothing. God is light. And in him there is no darkness at all. Um, we talked about this last night to a certain extent. We live in a day and age where we are trying to humanize God. Have you ever listened to somebody's concept of God? Wow. <laughs> I mean, where did they get that from? It flies in the face of verse number five. God is light. In him there's no darkness at all. This was popular not long ago. I don't think it is as much uh, today. It was a money-making thing, really, when it was all said and done. WWJD. You remember that? What, 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 what do those initials mean? What would Jesus do? Based on a book, which is probably a good book to read in his steps, but uh, that's where it was based on. What would Jesus do? And there were T-shirts and there were bracelets and, you know, uh, people were doing it. There were ball caps and so forth, little pendants you could wear and different things. And uh, it, it was popular. You ever see some of the people who were wearing it? You know, here's a guy, and he's sitting at the bar, and he's got a Budweiser and on his T-shirt, WWJD. Let me ask you a question. Did it hurt your brain to look at that picture? Is something not right there? When you see that, you're going, zzz, 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 you know, wait, 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 wait. This, is, this isn't right. This, this can't be because God is, you got any idea? Light. And in him, there is no darkness at all. Here's a good thing to remember. If it's bad, God's not in it. He can't be. Why? Not because I said so. For this simple truth, this premise, God is light. And in him there is no darkness at all. And if it's bad, God is not in it. And don't fool yourself into thinking it's okay. It would do us good. All of us. It would do us wonders if we could just grab a hold of this truth. God is light, and in him there's no darkness at all. Yeah, I'm going to be late for church. I can't do 60 down the road when it's a 30. Why? Because God is light, and in him there's no darkness at all. You can't justify wrong and put it on God's account. He's light, and in him there is no darkness. Darkness at all. Now, with verse 5 as the foundation, notice where he goes with this. Look at verse 6. If we say that we have fellowship with him, let me pause for a moment, make sure we're on the same page. Who is him? Jesus Christ. Very, you guys are great. I knew you were there just making sure. If we say that we have fellowship with him or with Christ and walk in darkness... Now, let's pause for just a moment. The word darkness there, what verse would that be referencing? The previous, 
the pre very good, Jay. You get a hundred. All right.